Today we're happy to visit three of the special schools, the public special schools run by the ministry. And the purpose of that was really to connect the needs of our children, um, those of children with special needs. We wanted to really have a first-hand view of where they operate from, a first-hand view of um, some of the challenges that, are, that they face, and also to interact with the administrators so that we can get an idea, and some from the staff to get an idea of what is necessary, um, what systems can be put in place, and even quick things, little things that can be done to assist these children. Of course, our special um, needs or children with special needs are very important to us, and so we want to make a concerted effort to improve their circumstances. Certainly, we may not be able to do everything at the same time, but there are things that we can do, and so we were out here this morning, Minister Julian and I, taking a first-hand um, look at what is happening at some of us. And that's the Minister of Education, uh, Dr. Nian Gatsby Dolly, uh, touring some special needs at schools. But the thing is, what's going to be happening to these children with special needs during this new school term? For years, we've been hearing that they've been left out of the loop. So this morning, we have with us the co founder of Autism Spirit, Mrs. Uh, Tracy Hutchinson Wallace, to speak to us about what is happening with the students of special needs. Good morning to you, uh, Mrs. Wallace. Good morning. Thank you for having me on today. Now you're sounding extremely low. I can hardly hear you. Are you hearing me? Good uh, morning. Thank you for having me on today. Uh, thank you for being a part of the program. So we heard from the ministry that the new school term will start in just, well, it has started today in terms of registration and hopefully online teaching will commence by the 14th of September. Can you share with us what is going to be happen with the children with special needs. Are they included in the system? Uh, I can't speak really for those in the public system. I was extremely gratified and happy to see the minister out and about on Saturday, getting a better idea of exactly what um, parents and learners of all ages are trying to deal with. I can't speak for my son's school, for one. Um, they had online learning, well, distance learning, really, throughout the March to July period, with, of course, periodic breaks. And today, in fact, they are beginning again just with the post-SCA group for the next couple of weeks with a targeted and pretty well-designed high school acclimatization program, which should give them a little bit more support um, for post-SCA, hopefully once they're placed into schools. Um, remember that many of these children can thrive in mainstream schooling with the appropriate supports and services and accommodations. Uh, I understand the minister is looking closely into that kind of support for schools. I'm really hoping that she will be including the private second, the private special needs schools in that mix. But how will um, this work, though? How will it work if we right. if we so normally have? It's, a, it's, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If we normally have the 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 aids physically with the child. How will it work on an online learning platform? That is the key question. For children who do not necessarily have AIDS, and there are really most of the children do not have AIDS, the school that I am associated with has developed a system of one-on-one -on -one interaction with the children through a volunteer, a series of volunteer school psychologists. The folks who did things like occupational therapy, um, some social skills therapy, and that sort of thing, have been working with parents um, online through WhatsApp, through chat groups, that kind of thing, to try to give the parents as much information as possible. They've also been sending a lot of um, internet information to the parents and really trying to stay very connected with the students during this time. Um, so but children how, who how need one-on-one has that one been? work. I'm sorry, go ahead. How effective has that been, the, to have the, uh, the support through the parents when they have to do the online learning? 
parents and teachers are very, very cognizant of the fact, I think everybody knows that, that they are partners in the educational process of their children. It works to a point, and then it doesn't. Remember, many of these parents are also working multiple jobs in order to be able to afford to be able to send their children to school or to pay for the therapies. So sometimes it is a bit of a challenge getting scheduling going. This is when you're starting to pull in um, other family networks. You're starting to have the kids up a little bit later at night so that they can interact with their therapists and with their teachers. Um, this is when you have parents in particular doing a great deal of online research and reading, trying to find for themselves um, all the information that they need, trying to empower themselves in this process. The difficulties really come with the children because they're children. There's only so long that they can work. There's only so much um, effort and attention that they can put in. And they inevitably also have some other challenges which are difficult to, to cope with. Things like anxiety, um, social skills issues, uh, some ex expressive and receptive language challenges. So it, it is very much a work in progress. It is very much a marathon. And I don't want people to get the idea that... Um, quick wins are something that are likely to come very, very rapidly. There are some things that can be done fairly quickly to enable the children and their families to have more support. Um, we're talking about things like technology, um, a sort of a blended learning, maybe a, a couple of days within the school system if sanitization appro is approval approved and a, a blended environment of in-person, online, and offline learning. But this is a long process, and it's something that everybody has to get together, and all the stakeholders really have to be on board with it. I'm not just talking about the stakeholders within the school community, um, parents, teachers, children. I'm talking about the stakeholders throughout society. Um, I'm looking particularly at employers now who may need to get a little more information and awareness about how flexible working conditions may need to be so that they don't lose their best workers because they are torn between doing their best for their children and putting food on the table. So you believe that employers should make some kind of leeway for parents with the special needs or just for parents overall, considering that everybody has to be uh, learning online at this time? For parents overall, it has always boggled the mind for me that parenting is said to be the most important job in the world. It is really your only job if you have offspring. But yet society as a whole has yet to come around to the idea of giving parents the kind of support they need in order to thrive at the both jobs they're doing. The job that's putting a roof over head and putting food on the table and the job of raising the next generations of society's um, citizens. Right, but especially during this pandemic when uh, companies are already feeling the pinch where profits are concerned, do you think it's something that they'll be willing to consider, especially given the, e given the economic climate? Given the economic climate, companies all over the world are more than considering it. They have realized that this is not going to go away. We have to think of new things of, new ways, sorry, of doing things, new ways of operating, taking advantage of the technology that is available. You know, it's funny, um, when the first lockdowns were happening and folks were so very upset and distressed about how it would work and stressed about how they'd be able to work, Disability communities around the world were saying, um, yeah, we've been doing this for decades now, so it's really hard, yes, but it's not impossible. All you need is the will so to get things done. Trinidad and Tobago is a very, very, very talented country. We have citizens who 
have proven over and over again that we can be innovative, I am pretty sure that the employers in this country are cut of the same cloth. They can come up with the ways that need to, that things need to be done in consultation with the parents. And it can really be a win-win situation for all of society.